in this video a 3 transistor beginners audio amplifier. And I hope I have enough time to explain all the properties. Anyway, it's made with two more or less classical end transistors for medium power, the BD139 and the BD140. You can connect the speaker here between 4 and 16 ohms. And furthermore the circuit is very simple. By the way this is the music that's playing on the background by the 126 Urs. But that music is quite good to show the properties of this amplifier. Uh, anyway, it is in fact extremely simple. Everyone can make such a simple amplifier. It gives out approximately 0 0.5 Watt into a good quality loudspeaker. That's the first thing that I want to tell uh, use for instance for these simple circuits. A broadband loudspeaker in a wooden box or so uh, that uh, can produce uh, the frequencies between say 100 Hz and 12 kHz properly. I want to demonstrate the sound. The volume goes up. And it's very important to tell that such an amplifier works very good, but uh, the problem of heat can be avoided by operating the whole circuit on 6 volts. When you go higher than 6 volts, uh, the current that the circuit takes will uh, go up more or less dramatically want to show that. Of course I need an audio signal first. We go now to 12 volts. Twelve volts approximately. And you can see that the pointer moves out fears. So the best thing to use this uh, to use this amplifier is on 6 volts. That's the best uh, voltage for this circuit. And you can also operate it on voltages between 3 and 5 volts anyway. Um, here is the circuit again. It's a complementary end stage. We have here a voltage drop that's caused by the two silicon diodes, the 1 and 4005. But you can also use and try um, other silicon diodes from the 1N family. For instance, the 1N4001 or the 1N4002. Test that. That's important. Do some tests. Uh, it was made for a battery and with a battery we always have the problem that the amplifier on a certain moment when the battery gets depleted sees a voltage and current source with a too high internal um, resistance. That means that when the battery gets depleted the whole circuit can start to motorboat. Motorboat sounds anyway. In that case use here a capacitor of 1000 microfarad. So not 22 microfarad 
but thousand microfarad. It will damp the oscillations. Furthermore, when you want to operate this amplifier on a long speaker uh, wire, could be that it starts to oscillate too. In that case, you uh, solder here a resistor or between, say, uh, 27 ohms and 100 ohms, parallel to the speaker. Of course, you can use this circuit as a kind of kind of impedance transformer because the uh, input impedance is high and the output impedance is low, so you can send a, a signal over very long wires, say uh, loudspeaker wires, to another room or so, that could be 20 meters or so. That's an application, a useful application of this circuit. So, for people that want to make it, this is important. The front of the BD139, here is the type number printed. And here also you can see here the pin connections. But for everyone that wants to make this circuit, this could be helpful. I have draw made a drawing about how to make such a circuit. It was here. I've made it in this way. Of course you can use a printed board anyway, you have to develop that, but there are more many possibilities to make this amplifier. So some instruction here, uh, this is a BD139 with its face up, so here is the type number, and this is the BD139 with its face down. So the type number is on the other side, and the good thing about that is that you can connect here to both emitters together very easily uh, via that 470 microfarad capacitor to the loudspeaker. Uh, this resistor and that capacitor set the base frequencies that the whole thing uh, can amplify. When I have time and my camera doesn't run out, I want to show that via the uh, sine wave generator. This is the bias potentiometer here, 500,000 ohms, that sets the working point of the first transistor. And here is a coupling capacitor that separates DC from AC, here also a coupling capacitor, and here is the volume uh, potentiometer. And important to tell, on 6 volts no cooling is necessary. You can build it as small as you like, but of course when you go higher than 6 volts in the supply voltage, uh, the transistors get warm and there is a kind of chance for a thermal runaway. And that's the reason why I advise to use this circuit only on 6 volts. When you want to go on higher voltages, the transistors need a cooling plate and the diodes have to be um, mounted, glued to the cooling plate, so that they can limit the quiescent current. It is a, it is a class B amplifier in fact. I don't want to get into all kinds of, uh, say, difficult uh, uh, situations about whether it's a class A or a class B or whatever. This is a good drawing, very useful for everyone uh, that wants to make uh, the first audio amplifier. So let's listen again to the sound. Of course you will hear distortion 
when the transistors are uh, overdriven with far too much signal, sine waves turn into square. Uh, sorry, yes, into square waves, etc. With harmonics, so the pure sine wave input. Uh, tells us about the distortion. With other waves you will surely easily have distortion anyway. So, I want to uh, try to demonstrate uh, how that circuit operates with a signal generator. This is the negative of the signal generator and here is the, the positive lead. It will take some time. I hope I, I have enough time to demonstrate it. Um, we have here a signal out of the generator. don't understand why I, of course, this is important. The volume potentiometer was to zero, but so. was uh, on zero. So here you uh, hear and see, I hope, when I connect my scope, Sorry for this not very convincing situation. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so, here's my scope. The signal now is on, say, 100 Hz. Let's do some amplification of, this, of the scope. And this is the waveform at say 100 Hz. Let's give it somewhat more energy, the input. Oh, it drops back anyway. Well, waveform 100 Hz. Waveform 1000 Hz. And the good thing of it all, 1000 Hz, so no distortion anyway, that's good. You can um, uh, tune the bias with that 500k potentiometer. So with that 500k potentiometer here, this one in the circuit, here, you can set the bias and thus the pure amplification of the sine wave. That means when you set that bias potentiometer to the good value, um, the audio signals will also be very properly amplified. I told it was um, 1000 Hz, but it's 10,000 Hz. Sorry to say. So. 10,000 Hz, we go higher now to the normal audio band. The maximum is, of course, say 20,000 Hz anyway. This is uh, say 20,000 Hz. So you see a very good sine wave here amplified. Uh, because of the properties of the circuit. The circuit amplifies the lowest frequency that it can amplify in a more or less proper way is say 100 Hz. That was all to tell. My camera runs out. Finally the drawing. That's very important. <laughs>